The Waikiki Promotion Committee sets up a pavilion at the 1915 International Exposition in San Francisco. It turns into one of the great marketing stories of the century. Millions of exposition visitors hear the ukulele and it takes off as a national fan. Henry Kailimai's composition on the beach at Waikiki becomes a major national hit. An idyllic image of the Hawaiian Islands slips into the nation's consciousness. Diamond head, hula dancers, palm trees. New York's Tin Pan Alley begins marketing Hawaiian songs. Overnight, this humble instrument of Waikiki's Beach Boys becomes part of mainstream American culture. A decade later, hundreds of thousands of ukulele sell across the country. Sunny Kuna, a young native Hawaiian Yale graduate, adapts the old Moana Lua Hula into Bula Bula, and it becomes Yale's school song. Johnny Noble joins his orchestra in 1918, and modern Hawaiian music is born. The ukulele becomes part of the image of the college kid with his raccoon coat and a flapper on his arm, a symbol of American freedom in the Roaring Twenties. Meanwhile, Hawaii's king of the steel guitar, Saul Ho'opi'i, takes the sound of the islands to Hollywood. His music is so soulful, he's asked to play on cue for silent screen star Mary Pickford to help her cry. series of shows in the Midwest called Chautauquas, and they were gone like magic. The next day, pulled up and gone to the next town. And it cost a dollar to get in, and I had never seen a dollar. But a friend of mine did, and he took me to the show. It was a Hawaiian troupe that was on tour. There was about seven or eight in the troupe. I imagine that it was a family. The backdrop was a painting of the palm trees and all that exotic stuff that we didn't see in Ohio. And I heard my first steel guitar player, and I came clear up out of my seat. He was playing one of these guitars, just like this one. And from that day on, I knew that that was what I was gonna do, was learn to play that instrument. Thousands of people ride the avenue to Kapi'olani Park with its beautiful lily ponds, horse races, and polo games on Saturday afternoon. Horse races in those days, really, really very funny. Betting was open to whoever had silver dollars, kala, or gold pieces, and everybody bet. Even the chief of police, the chief of detectives, the whole place was jam-packed, and everybody bet. The majority of people attending were family. 